Hello, my name is Kerry Martell and I'm the founder of Power Palace Gym here in Newburgh, Oregon. I have been open with my gym three weeks as of this Saturday. So today is Friday morning. It's like four in the morning right now. I just did a little bit of a workout for myself, some legs, nothing too serious. I'm still getting back in the swing of things. As you can probably kind of tell, I've got some COVID pounds. So I'm putting this video out there because I, I spent months researching how to start a bodybuilding gym. Um, lots of information out there on how to start a powerlifting gym or maybe a strongman gym. Not a lot of information on how to make a bodybuilding gym. Um, actually pretty frustrating to be perfectly honest. I have wasted, I'm just gonna say, I've wasted a bunch of money buying like how to start a gym books watching people's YouTube channels, like how they're starting to jump, and they really don't tell you much at all about how to actually specifically start a bodybuilding gym. I think it's for a couple of reasons. Um, first is that uh, independent gyms, such as what I created, are not that common anymore, right? Most people are just buying a franchise, and the franchise has all the equipment that's gonna go in there, all from their suppliers and all their shares. So there's no need, I suppose, for this type of video to be out there. To be really honest, I don't know how popular this video is going to be. A lot of the videos I have seen on YouTube of people talking about how to start any type of gym don't have a lot of views. So maybe nobody gives a shit about this video to begin with and I'm wasting my time. Nevertheless, for those people out there uh, who are interested, this the purpose of this video is not to sell you shit, right? I don't give a damn if you buy anything from me, uh, mostly because I have nothing to sell you. I don't have like a business plan or a fucking book or any of that noise. Okay, this is just cold, hard facts about my personal experience starting a bodybuilding gym that also has powerlifting, that also has sports conditioning and, and stuff like that, but definitely has bodybuilding equipment and is meant for people to be able to do bodybuilding. And what do I mean by bodybuilding? I mean doing the bodybuilding fitness routines um, not necessarily talking about high-level bodybuilding. I think that with the equipment that is here, you definitely could do competitive bodybuilding, right? Everything that I have in here is the same equipment that the guys on the walls of my gym have, right? Ronnie Coleman, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Franco Colombo, Lee Haney, Sergio Olivio. I have the shit that they used to get freaking huge, okay? The stuff to make you swole. I've got the stuff in here, and I'm going to talk about that. So how the hell did I get into this? Let's first get into like, what was my reason for starting a gym? And the reason I'm gonna put this out there because this might resonate with some people and maybe make them rethink on why they want to start a gym. So I've always loved fitness. Okay, I used to be in the army, uh, lots of martial arts. I used to lift, you know, pretty heavy when I was a kid. And when I got out of the military, I had a bad reaction to the anthrax vaccine. That's the reason why I left after five years of service. Bad reaction, second dose of the anthrax vaccine f my system up and I had a long period of recovery to kind of overcome that. Once I did overcome it, I was able to work out again and the main challenge in my life at that point was the fact that I was constantly moving around. I was constantly moving all over this damn state. It's kind of a nomad. Um, I had a business that started originally in, in when I was in film school up in Ann Arbor, Michigan and then I moved down to Texas and I lived in Texas for a while and I was in Virginia for a while and I was in in, uh, I was in Arizona, I was in Los Angeles, I was over the goddamn place, okay? And it made it really difficult to have a, a sustained lifestyle going to a gym. And so I would bounce around and I'd visit lots of gyms, but I would never be able to stick with it. And that would be the hardest thing for me. Now here's the opportunity. I'm in Los Angeles at the time and COVID happens, right? So I, as many people do, go back to my home state, my hometown uh, here of Newburgh, Oregon. And I decide that I'm going to stay this time. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go back to LA. That was my decision I made. Um, and so what becomes of what am I going to do in my hometown? Well, I want to get back into shape. This has been one of my goals. I was actually doing really well until COVID happened. And I, I was doing really well actually up to, uh, during the first year of COVID when I wasn't back in my hometown. I was originally in Phoenix, Arizona. I was doing really well. Um, that I come back to my hometown, there's no gym. So uh, my hometown has always had uh, a bodybuilding, powerlifting type of gym people can go to and didn't have that anymore closed during COVID. 
former owner wasn't going to start it up again. So I decided to create one. This is a great opportunity to create a gym that I would want to train at. And I think a lot of other people would enjoy training at too. So that's the important thing, right? You are starting a business. It is a freaking business. It's not a place just for you to personally work out at. That's a home gym. That is a home gym. This is really important because I've watched a lot of fucking people's videos and I'm cursing here, but I've watched a lot of, I've wasted a tremendous amount of time watching people's videos who very clearly wanted to make a home gym and not a actual gym for other people to work out at and pay them money to train at. There's equipment in here, everything I'll use, right? But there's definitely equipment in here that more people are going to be interested in than others based on their needs. And that's the important thing. It's a business. It's about providing a service to other people. It's not just a place for you to fucking work out at, okay? Gym owners, this is something I learned in the research of it, and it's definitely been my experience, okay? If you're on the floor training all 24-7, first off, that's stupid. You're, 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 that, that's not physically realistic to be training all day long. You see those stupid videos, all these celebrities supposedly like, oh, I've trained all day long. That's a bunch of garbage, okay? That's not what they're doing. The human body can really only sustain that type of activity for a short period of time, at most maybe a couple hours, okay? I definitely knew this from infantry, right? Like you have to have rest in between the labor and work that you're doing, right? Your body needs time to recover and heal and rebuild itself. And you have to give yourself that time, especially when you're putting hundreds of pounds of, of, of plates above your head or stepping it on your back or whatever else that you're doing, okay? So thinking that you're, I'm gonna start a gym because I'm gonna work out all day, that's, that's fucking stupid. That's not what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen is what's going on with me, right? Where I mostly stick my ass at the front desk most hours of the day from like 10 a.m. to eight o'clock at night because I'm the only person here right now, okay? When I'm trying to get myself cash flow positive, I don't have any other employees. So I'm at the desk, I'm helping other people. People need a spot, I give them a spot. People come in the door, they wanna check out the gym. I give them a tour of the facility. I give them some pointers and show them how to use some of the more esoteric equipment they may not have seen before, such as the Nautilus pullover machines and things like that, okay? Uh, and I'm here to provide a service to other people. That is the number one thing. My training comes last. I usually work out, you know, at like three in the morning, okay? Or I work out after eight o'clock when I close the doors. If it's not too busy, I'll go on the floor and I'll do my workout, okay? Otherwise, I'll take a freaking nap, and I'll get up, do some training, okay? Take another nap, be here to open up the doors at eight in the morning, excuse me, 10 in the morning. So, with that shit out of the way, let's get into the meat and bolts of how to actually start a freaking bodybuilding gym. The number one problem I had was actually getting some type of instructions on what type of equipment a commercial, independent bodybuilding gym should offer. There is no, there is no guide on what you need, okay? There isn't. So this is what I had to do. I had to literally dig through my brain on all the different equipment that I've ever freaking seen at a gym and make a list of what I thought was the most important stuff to have. Then to supplement that, I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos of other people training at places like Metroflex, okay? Other big gyms, really well-known gyms. And I, one of the things I did was I watched, um, uh, um, try and remember his, his name here, uh, John Meadows. I love John Meadows' content. Tremendous loss uh, he has been, I think, to the online fitness community, especially on YouTube. John Meadows, Mountain Dog, okay? Has a wonderful series of where he goes and he tours what he regards as the best gyms in the world. And I took notes, guys. I took notes on what equipment I thought would be good based on how excited John Meadows got about different pieces of equipment. Because if that man was excited about equipment, that's equipment that I should try to get, okay? So that's what I tried to do. What, uh, you know, it's probably easier. I'm just gonna make my spreadsheet available. It'll be in the link of the video description. The spreadsheet of the equipment that I think people should try to get for a bodybuilding gym. But to very quickly go over some of it, okay, I think that you need a flat press, flat bench press. You need an incline press, you need a decline press. 
you need these very freaking presses, okay? Because some people want to work more on the lower part of their chest and their upper part of the chest, okay? You need to provide that to people so they have that option. You need a full dumbbell rack. I need to stress this shit. You need a full dumbbell rack, five to 125 at least. I have space on my rack to go up to 150s and I'm going to get the 150s. And it's not because people are gonna be constantly using it. That's not the reason. You have it for two reasons. One, there is going to be some people that need to use it. It's not available. It, it's gonna impact their training. Two, give people goals. Give people goals to aspire toward, okay? Somebody's gonna be like, my goal is to get over 125 into the 130s and see how far I can go. How are they going to ever achieve that goal if you don't have fucking dumbbells for them? I know I'm cursing, but this is serious, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a bodybuilding gym and they don't have a full fucking dumbbell rack. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Planet Fitness, what the hell? Go in there and it's like, what, 60 pound? Like, what the hell? Dude, dude, I just got back into lifting after not being able to lift for a whole year. And yeah, could I still lift 95s? No, I was, I'll just do 70s. I couldn't even do the 70s, okay? But you know what? I started with the 55s and now I'm already back to 75s doing 12 reps. And I've opened my gym for like almost three weeks, okay? Why the hell would you only have your dumbbell rack up to something that somebody could get to within three fucking weeks of training? The hell? If you go into a gym and they don't have a full dumbbell rack, I suggest you walk the hell out because that is not a serious gym that is there for actual real fitness training. You need actual weights to get swole, guys, into the ramp, okay? Barbells. You need good barbells. You can't have trash, BS, Amazon, no-name brand barbells that are going to bend if somebody puts more than 300 fucking pounds on them. These are Hampton 45s. Are these the greatest? No, they're not. But they're going to handle most people's weight that people can lift. For the people who are strong as crap, I have Rogue Ohio Power Bar. I've got a deadlift bar. I have a safety Soronex bar. Okay, I've got a, a Duffalo bar. It's a rogue brand, but still, it's still gonna be stronger than some BS that you got off Amazon for 50 bucks, which is going to last, I don't even know. I have one of those bars in here I didn't buy off Amazon. I got it actually for free when I bought a bunch of equipment from somebody else. I have it sitting on the military press. And on the military press, because I know most people are not gonna be able to lift enough weight to bend that bar on a military press. So I have it on the military press where it's probably safe. Um, you know, this is serious. Like if you're gonna have a place for people to train, you need to have equipment that's not going to break super easy. There's some people that have gyms and they kick people out if they're too strong. That's the opposite of what you want. People don't want to go to the gym of weak ass people. They wanna to go to the gym where the strong people train so that they can get strong themselves. That's what people want. Serious. Um, fixed barbells. You need fixed barbells, okay? And the reason's very simple. You got a busy gym, you need people to be able to quickly be able to drop set with their fixed barbells when they're on the preacher curl or they're doing some other type of exercise where, where it's more suitable for having a fixed barbell. That's very useful. People want to start out with lunges. It's usually easier with a fixed barbell to do lunges than it is to put a bunch of weight on a 45 pound barbell. Um, you need, let's see, preacher curls, right? And if you, if you can only get one preacher curl, only one, get the traditional old school round head model, which is this Nautilus one that I have sitting right over here. I'll have a little photo of it in the video. Get that one. The other one I have right next to it is a Maxicam. It's also, you know, old as in it's, I think it's from the eighties. It is the flathead version. They both have their uses, okay? Flathead takes away the forearm more, focus just on the bicep. The old school one is really the forearm and the bicep, but the difference is that you can get a much deeper sort of pull with that bicep, and it's really good for working the smaller head of the bicep, so you can really pop out that bicep 
make it look big and freaking huge. Okay, it's really harder to get that angle with the uh, the more modern flat one than the old fashioned round head one. So if you're gonna get one preacher curl, try to get the older school one. In my case, I have one that came out of a Nautilus fitness center uh, from either the 70s or the 80s. Who knows, they all closed in like 86 or something. Okay, um, what else? Stationary benches, do you want, you want steel stationary benches for incline and probably even a decline bench. I know decline uh, dumbbell stuff is not that common anymore, but it should be. A really excellent exercise for the chest is the decline dumbbell fly, and you need to have a bench that will decline to be able to do it. And you need something solid steel, because when somebody starts taking you know, really heavy, like 90 pound dumbbells and plus, and they're doing those flies, it needs to not crumble underneath their weight, okay? So get solid steel, old school, nice, good stationary benches for the incline and your decline. I would, I have at least, uh, I have two over here and I've got two more uh, incline benches over there. On the subject of stationary benches, I highly recommend having uh, one bench, which is specifically for military press. It is not adjustable. I have a photo of what I'm talking about here. It's a military press a bench is really what it is. And um, it may be kind of difficult to find because a lot of people selling this shit, they don't know what the fuck it is anymore. And they just say like, it's a bench. Um, so it can be difficult to find on Craigslist and, and eBay or wherever you're trying to go, Facebook Marketplace. And you need to be able to look at the equipment and see what the hell it is. But anyway, the reason why I suggest you have that is because you should also have at least one Smith machine. I have one Smith machine. It's an old school model, doesn't take up a lot of space. Not everybody likes it because it's difficult for some of the larger guys to get underneath it, get the right angles and whatever else. Honestly, it's really not for bench presses on it or squats on it. A lot of people are not using Smith machine correctly for what it really is good for, which is doing a front military press, specifically for the front delt. Excellent, excellent exercise. That is the best exercise for the front delt. A lot of people will tell you this. Um, and you need to have a good bench for somebody to really get a lot of weight under it. So you don't want an adjustable bench. You want an actual real stationary military press to set up a, a right next to it for that station. On the subject uh, uh, of other equipment, before I get to it, let's talk about pounds, right? Let's talk about your plates. Let's talk about your freaking iron, right? I have a hodgepodge of different brands, which is kind of a little sucky, right? Because some people, it, because when you have different size plates, it doesn't balance exactly the right, and some people hate that. The reality is that COVID-19 has made plates that used to be e super easy to find, high quality plates like York old school brand deep dish shit for less than a dollar a pound, and now you really can't. It's really hard to find that. Um, I have a bunch of pounds mixed matched, mostly out of people's, you know, people bought all this stuff during COVID. So I'd buy it from them when they went back to the gyms. Gym started opening up here in Oregon around last September and I started purchasing plates. And every plate that's in here, I all got I got always at a dollar a pound or less. But I got it because somebody only had like 10, you know, 10 pound plates. Somebody else only had 45 pound plates. Nobody had a complete set of anything. And therefore, I don't have a complete set of anything. I've got Hampton Brands. I've got standard old school. I've got American, right? I've got some bullshit that came out of a GI Joe's. Um, I've got some stuff that came out of Dick's Sporting Goods. I've got as a hodgepodge of different freaking iron. But you know what the important thing is? Iron is iron, right? Weight is weight. People need plates to get strong and you need to have enough of it for all of the customers to be able to work out on all these different stations at once. You need a lot of 45s for a leg press. And I do recommend having a leg press, excellent piece of equipment. Um, we'll talk about a bit more about what type of leg press you should get in a sec, but you need a lot of iron. I would suggest aiming for at least a bare minimum of 3000 pounds of plates. I honestly cannot remember how much pounds of plates I have right now. It's somewhere between 3,000 and 4,000 pounds, and I still don't have enough. So I, my goal was actually 6,000 pounds of plates. And the most economical way to get the brand new plates 
seems to be right now from Titan Fitness, but even that's over a dollar a pound. Um, bumper plates, the cheapest I found online for bumper plates was from Titan Fitness. And I did order it from Titan Fitness because uh, brand new bumper plates because I could not find anybody who was selling bumper plates at a realistic rate. People are still trying to sell that shit for $4 a pound here in Oregon. And I'm not paying that price for used bumper plates mixed match from all kinds of fucking brands. I'm not doing that shit. So I just bought it straight from Titan and they're nice. They're nice bumpers. People are happy with them. People have been doing clean and jerks and presses with them. They're good. Okay, let's talk about keeping with upper body area before we get into the legs. Um, I would suggest having a military press station. Military press is a great exercise, and um, the one I have over here is from Cybex. I'm not going to list a lot of brands here because there's, it just gets really hard. What I would suggest is trying to find old school looking equipment, solid steel stuff, okay? Good, strong tubing, not this BS stuff that a lot of places are making. I would highly suggest avoiding pre-core machine, uh, machines and um, benches and things like that. Pre-core is very popular right now, but I'm not a fan of their quality. I think some of their stuff feels weird and it's not the right angles and it's just not as good as some of the older stuff. Now people might make fun of you because oh, you got a bunch of old equipment. I have equipment that people get jacked on. People have got jacked on this stuff, okay? And if it worked in the past, it'll work for anybody today. It ain't been that long ago, all right? So, old school quality equipment that has good welds, that has survived for decades, is better than some brand new horseshit that somebody pulled out of a factory in China with shit welds, all right? Avoid pre-court if you can. Uh, Hoist. Hoist is an excellent brand. They're great. Nebula. Nebula is a great brand. Cybex is a great brand. Um, other, other brands I'm trying to think off the top of my head that are really good within these types of upper body uh, stations. Um, there's a lot of them out there, but those are the ones I mostly look for. Um, body Masters, I think, is also a really fantastic brand, but people want crazy amounts of money for them. Hammer Strength. Hammer strength is, my opinion, kind of a mixed bag. Hammer strength is very popular. Lots of people love them. Lots of people are familiar with them. Problem with hammer strength is that they'll make a, you know, a machine or a station that is really specific. But as an example, I have a hammer strength front military press over here, right? And it it's not adjustable. If you want a more traditional military press, you have to buy and assemble a whole other fucking station just for that military press, right? For the regular military press, because that station is just for front military press, which is, is fucking, I'm not a big fan of this, right? And I get why they do it, right? Because they can fill up, they can sell a bunch more equipment when it's like specialty like that, but I'm not a big fan of that. I like stuff that's more versatile, which is why having a more traditional military press station is a lot better for that, okay? You can change out the benches, you can put in a more of an incline uh, and you can do more of a front military press with an old school barbell. And it's, it's, just, it's the same fucking thing. Uh, other things uh, which are good, um, if you can find it, you know, maxi cam stuff is really nice. I've got a maxi cam uh, cable crossover over here. Old school, very nice. It doesn't have the adjustable, you know, stations, but it does have the pulleys at the top and the bottom. And that's really what you need. If you want it more adjustable, it makes really more sense to get a functional trainer anyway. Um, but in any case, get what you can get, right? But Maxcam is a pretty good brand. The company's not around anymore though. Um, other stuff that's good, you'll notice on my floor, I have a lot of old school chain driven Natalis machines. And some people poo poo on Natalis, all right? But Natalis, Natalis is hardcore shit, right? Chain driven machines. Who the fuck makes chain-driven machines anymore? Nobody makes them anymore, right? Not even the Natalists of today. When they imitate the old school cam designs, they're now using Kevlar belts. Kevlar is okay, but it wears out a lot faster. These damn chains last freaking forever. And um, they're, 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 they're strong. You can easily 
put in you know a gym a, a, a pin to add plates to this equipment and the chain's going to handle it can't necessarily say the same about regular ropes kevlar's kind of also can handle it but maybe not as much weight nevertheless um i'm sort of rambling here but it's important nautilus old school stuff not everything from the nautilus lines are the best but there's definitely some stuff which are really useful okay um I would dare highly recommend a pullover machine, super pullover machine, considered one of the best bodybuilding machines ever created because it does hit a bunch of stuff, right? It hits your core, can hit your chest, but you can also use it specifically to isolate your lats. And it's the only way I'm aware of, that's what everybody has told me at least, it's the only machine that will actually let you isolate just the lats and not have to use your bicep for a pullover motion. And people like Dorian Yates, Sergio Livio, tremendous backs, using the pullover. You'll even see photos of Arnold Schwarzenegger having used pullovers, okay, later in his training. Ronnie Coleman, I believe they had a pullover machine in Metroflex. Everybody fucking train on pullovers, right? So if you wanna have a nice back, pullover's an excellent piece of equipment for that. Have to use the right way, okay? It's like a lat pull down. Get yourself a little puffed up, puff up your chest while you are pulling back on the machine and activate those lats. That's the way to use it. Other machines, double chest. Double chest is a fantastic pump. Crazy, excellent machine. It's kind of like an incline dumb, uh, incline pec deck machine. Lots of people are familiar with that. And I like pec flies too. I'll probably get one in when I can find a nice adjustable one that you can also do rear delt on. But this double chest machine, I, I, it's, it's so choice, okay? You, you use it and you can immediately superset with a decline press. And then if you have the 10 degree chest, which is such a great, great purchase I made. I wasn't actually that familiar with it. I had never used one before. I'd seen them, but I never actually used them. I did a little bit of research. Perfect. It was meant to circuit directly with the double chest machine. It's basically doing a pec fly without having to use your shoulders and your biceps to hold the dumbbells up. So you can just focus just on the chest. And you, if you do it immediately following that double chest machine, it is an amazing workout. Great workout, highly recommend. Um, bicep, tricep machines. Bicep machine is multi, so it, you, you know, it moves independently of each other. That's the way you really wanna go. Honestly, if I was gonna have a bicep machine, I would focus on something like you know, the Nautilus cam system because it has the variable. So that the, the big problem with bicep machines in general is you see them with the pulley systems, right? The problem with the pulley system is it's a wheel. So the, the resistance is consistent throughout the entire range of the motion. Problem is that when you do a bicep curl, this part of it right in here is your forearm and not really your bicep. Your bicep's not really being used. So people, when they're doing a bicep curl, you're generally actually weighing your bicep curl for your forearm and not necessarily for your bicep, okay? That's the big problem with a lot of bicep curls. Machine changes that because the cam is oval shaped, right? So it increases the intensity while you're actually getting into the bicep curl itself, the actual bicep workout, and it increases the tension by lengthening you know, the, the, the space between the weight stack and the, the, uh, the chain. So it's so nice. I love to superset. Obviously, it's not something that you just, just do the bicep curl you know, in the machine because that doesn't hit all the angles, especially on the short head, right? It really seems to work, in my experience, more of the long head than the short head. But if you superset it with something else, like a crucifix curl, right, on, on the crossovers, or maybe even um, superset it with a more traditional, you know, hammer curl or something using the dumbbells, it's a really nice exercise. Highly recommend trying it out. Similar with the triceps, the tricep machines are really nice. You karate chop forward motion. Okay. The thing with it is that it seems to work more of the short head. Um, the shorter heads of the tricep than the lawn head, I think. Just kind of my experience. If you want to work the lawn head, you really need to use a crossover attachment or maybe some type of skull crusher variation. That's a good way to work the lawn head. But they're excellent for supersetting is what they're good for, okay? Other stuff you definitely need. Um, I would suggest cable row machine, okay? You need cable row, but should not be confused with a cable cardio rowing machine, all right, concept two, and uh, selectorized weight stack cable row are two different things. You can kind of do them on 
a cable crossover, but it's not as convenient as having the actual station for it, especially when you have people that want to use the cable crossover for something that you can only do on a cable crossover and that you can't do on the, uh, the cable row machine itself. Lateral pull down, have to have it, works the upper, can work the upper back a bit, mostly works the lats, obviously, uh, it's called that way. It can also be used uh, other types of grips to work more of the biceps and things like that. I like to do a warm up with a uh, underhand grip um, on the lateral press to, work, to warm up my bicep. <sighs> Bench press machine, I do have one of those. They're, they're useful for people who are starting out who don't feel so confident about getting underneath one of these, these um, bars, but it's not needed. I have it just because it came as part of the set when I bought a bunch of stuff from somebody else. I, I mean, it cost me like 300 bucks to buy it. It was there, why not? Um, but not necessary. Lateral raise machine, great machines. Lateral raise with the dumbbells have a similar problem with the bicep curl, right? You have to rely so heavily on the other parts of your arm to be able to lay, raise it up with the dumbbells. With the machine, you can focus just on those delts. So highly recommend getting a lateral raise machine. Then you should consider is that there's two different variations of the standing, uh, excuse me, of a lateral raise. There's a standing version and the seated version. I love, I prefer, in fact, the standing version. And I do think that the standing version of a lateral raise machine is superior. There's only one company I think that still makes them. They're very expensive. Um, that company is Arsenal Strength. I have used Arsenal Strength lateral raise machine. Terrific machine. Very expensive. Basically never see them on the used market. Other problem with the Arsenal is that if you're too tall, it's actually really challenging to get the right angle because it is not adjustable. So to, for the most bang for your buck, you should do what I have done and get a seated adjustable lateral raise machine so that very tall people can use it. And you're gonna find a lot of people who are serious about bodybuilding do tend to be a little bit taller than I am. Other machines, um, ab machines, ab crunch, torso twist, rotary torso twist, whatever you like to call it. Very useful machines, just like any other uh, muscle, you know, your, your core needs to have resistance to be able to get longer. You do as many sit-ups, crunches as you want. You're gonna be wasting your freaking time because you have to add resistance to increase the size of your abs, just like any other muscle. So having the stations is a very convenient way. Other ways you can go work your core is obviously have a GHD, have a Roman chair, add some plates and things like that. Great exercises too, but select drive stack makes it a little bit easier to add that resistance. Four-way neck machine. This is something that you really don't see these days, okay? And I don't, I don't understand why. I think it's because some people are scared. They're scared to work their neck, and you shouldn't be because your neck is a muscle just like any other, right? Um, Four-way neck machine makes it so convenient to work your neck. And neck is important, right? You want to look jack when you're just walking around in a t-shirt, you have a neck, right? Uh, also, it has a functional purpose. If you're doing sports, you're doing martial arts, boxing, football, even baseball, right? You get hit in the head with something hard, you know, you're going to want to have a strong neck to reduce the chance of suffering a concussion. You need to, uh, and other problems with your neck. Have a strong neck will protect your neck, okay? That's the reality. It will protect your head, it'll save you, and you shouldn't worry about like overstraining your neck. It's actually kind of hard to do that. It's something I learned in, in, in uh, the military, wearing these Kevlar helmets all the time. It's really difficult to actually overstress your neck, and the muscle-wise, right? The bones is a different story. But the fortunate thing is that neck machine doesn't work the bones in your neck anyway, so don't worry about that. Other type of machines really should have, um, I do have a hammer strength chest machine, okay? Some people like the chest press, whatever. Um, I think it's a nice machine, I don't use it, but some people really love it, so it might be useful to have it. Other type of essential stuff, um, still with the upper body of the arms, I would say having a pull-up station, and you should have two types really, you should have the, the traditional type, a pull up unassisted, and if you can, have a dip combo like I have with the MaxiCam version, which mine is actually kind of unique. You're probably not gonna find this 
they don't make this shit anymore. Um, it has a selectorized weight stack on it, and if you attach it to a dip belt, you can easily add resistance to push-ups and dips without having to like wear a weighted vest, hang chains around your neck, and all that silly stuff. Just use the selectorized stack, and it pulls it straight down. It's a lot more, it, it's just better, okay? So if you can find it, by all means get it. They don't make this shit anymore, so you probably won't find one. Um, but if you can't, it's available. You definitely have at least an unassisted one, so people can add resistance with you know the, the methods I mentioned before, dangling chains over your neck and wearing a weighted vest and whatever. Um, also, you want an unassisted one, right? The opposite, where you add weight to the stack and it makes it easier to do dips and pull-ups. And the reason is twofold, right? First off, beginners, pull-up is a hard exercise for a lot of people who are immobile. I can't even do a full pull-up anymore. I'm totally out of shape right now. More importantly, when you are exhausted, when you are exhausted, it's hard to do full good sets and work out all those muscles that are exhausted. I like to do pull-ups and dips at the very end of an arm or back day, and I'm exhausted. And even if I was super strong, it would be difficult for me to do uh, like four sets of like 12 reps on that station after I've already finished working out my back. So having the selectorized stack is very useful. Another thing, people who are super serious about, you know, like rock climbing and stuff, they might want to drop set between a pull-up uh, on assisted station and a assisted station to make it easier for them. They might want to drop set, right? And you can't drop set if you don't have a weight ass uh, assisted pull-up and dip station. So have both. What else you should have upper body wise? I'm trying really hard to think. Like accessories, like you can get accessories, right? Like an arm blaster, okay? Old weeder style arm blaster, that's nice. Chest expanders, great thing to have, okay? Um, honestly, what else do I need for upper body? Oh, you know what's good? A T-bar row and a, uh, a bent over row station. I would consider those to be kind of essential too for a bodybuilding gym. Those are fantastic exercises for the back, T-bar in particular. Okay, kind of really focus on the middle of your back. Really hard angle to hit otherwise. Good thing to have. What else? There's actually some stuff that I'm missing in here, right? Desirable stuff. Super rare stuff. Um, forearm machine, some type of trainer for the forearms and grip strength. Okay, that's forearms. Kind of hard to train. People like buy their Captain Crush. Captains of Crush um, grippers. I don't have any of those on the floor because... Um, People probably will steal them because they're so nice and they're kind of expensive. So I don't have one of those, but I'm planning to try to get a old school Nautilus Super Forearm Machine station in here because there's not a lot of forearm station equipment that's really nice and that's considered one of the best. So I, when I bought all this Nautilus equipment, somebody did have a Nautilus uh, Super Forearm Machine next generation station there and I wanted it so badly, and but it was already sold to somebody else. They already had their name on it. So... I missed, I missed out, but I got the pullover, so there's that. Honestly, for the rest, for, for the chest, I can't think of anything um, that's on my floor that I'm missing. The only thing I would say is a pec deck machine, specifically one that's adjustable so you can expand it, the arms up and down. There's not many brands, I think, that make it that way. I actually can't think off the top of my head the name of a brand that does, but I've seen them before. You want the ones that are a little bit adjustable and that you can sit around on and you can also work the rear delts on. That combination is very choice and that's probably the only one I would invest into. There is the older school pack flies that has this kind of pad in the front of it. I'll see if we can find a picture of it. But honestly, there's no real purpose in having that because it's such a specific exercise and it's specifically just for the pecs. And you can do the same exact thing with any of these adjust more adjustable more modern PEC, uh, PEC multi rear delt machines. You get the exact same angle with that machine anyway. And it's more versatile because you can do the rear delt exercise with it. And the more traditional fly uh, kind of PEC station. It's not as easy to do because it's just kind of a weird angle. It doesn't go back far enough. They don't go up and down a little bit to the sides. Yeah, I'll show a picture on so you kind of know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to describe without having it physically here. Okay, I think it kind of covers the chest, right? Let's talk about legs. You want 
squat racks. Squat racks, have to have squat racks, okay? None of the Smith machine bullshit, like I said before. This isn't Planet Pizza, okay? Planet Fitness. This is an actual real gym that you're trying to build. You need squat racks. What kind of squat racks should you have? Highly recommend the brand new type of, you know, they're, they're really popular with home gyms, but the actual cages, okay? You know, they have the safety bars. That's what you really want. I wanted to get like the high-end uh, rogue cages, you know, the monster series cages, but they're expensive as hell. And uh, I could get two cages for the price of, you know, one of those things. So I got two Titan X-ray cages. Now, there's some people that don't like Titan, they're, they're, and there's good reasons for this, okay? But my personal experience with Titan has been very positive so far. Um, Alan Thrall has one of the only YouTube channels uh, I have seen that provides really good information for gym owners, and he hates Titan Fitness with a, with a hard, you know, hard passion. And from his experience, you know, uh, I can understand why. Um, he said that he had equipment, you know, he, bolts were missing, pieces were missing from his cages. He had a terrible experience. When he did finally get them assembled, you know, they rattled really easy. Um, I, I think that Titan might have fixed those problems. I had more than enough bolts and washers to assemble um, my two racks. They, they fit very well tightly together. They're bolted down to the ground and they're not moving. And I've had people, you know, doing some serious serious weight on these, okay? Like high level power lifting, doing power shrugs directly off the safeties, doing rack pulls on this, okay? They're not, they're not budging and they're not getting loose. And I know it's only been three weeks, but there's been a lot of work and a lot of weight that has been done on these racks and they are tight. So I do recommend Titan. I think that they're a good brand. Um, that's all I can say about it. Um, I would avoid the older school type of squat racks because they don't have safeties. I mean, they kind of have safety in the sense that there's a little bar there, but it's not adjustable safety, right? You have adjustable safeties, the newer style of power rack cages. I like those. Um, Rogue, Rogue or Rep Fitness. Rep Fitness, I was really strongly considering because I like they have a much wider range of accessories than Titan Fitness does. But to be perfectly honest, I don't need that many accessories for a commercial gym anyway, because I can have dedicated stations for things like T-bar rows and things like that, and, and pull-up stations and you know pulleys and all that, all that noise. So it doesn't really matter, I suppose, too much about the accessories, um, but it's nice to be able to have the option, I guess, to have accessories with your cages. So I'd recommend Rogue Rep Fitness or Titan Fitness, who is on the cheaper end. Now, one thing you should consider about Titan Fitness is that they're not gonna send you any damn instructions, okay? I got this little postcard, which I think is the warranty, and has a little code on it. You're supposed to enter that code into their website, and it was it's supposed to be able to download the instructions. Um, neither of the codes worked for downloading the instructions for the cages, and what I ended up doing is I ended up just searching online for somebody else who had uploaded to, to, to their own website the instructions, so I downloaded it and assembled the cages. So, but anyway, um, you know, the cutouts, they, they, they have low costs, they don't want to print paper so anyway that's enough rambling about power cages um i think that deadlift platform is definitely nice i was originally just going to get a regular wood platform but everybody was trying to sell a wood platform for the exact same price as a brand new titan fitness deadlift platform that has the, the arms for elastic bands so i just bought that instead yeah i guess it's a knockoff of the rogue version just as good i think um, where to get the damn bands, um, just go on Amazon and look for pull-up band, elastic bands, resistance bands. It's the same fucking thing. So just order two of those so you have you know two on both sides of the deadlift. Um, also recommend getting deadlift jacks. Um, they have two different versions. There's the single, you know, standalone little stands. So you basically need two of them to be able to easily load up the deadlift, uh, the deadlift bar with weight or you can get where the two arms are kind of connected together. I went the cheaper way with them both being independent. It, it's fine, it's totally okay, everybody's happy with it. Crash pads, crash pads are necessary if you're gonna do clean jerks, okay? Um, I think so, especially if you have a small space kind of like where I have my deadlift platform. People do clean presses and they drop it up, you know, and it sort of rolls around 
you don't want that with the crash pads. So they kind of just sort of stay in that area much better. Um, what else can I think about before we move on? Uh, weight belts, we want weight belts, right? Weight belts for every shape and size. I bought some brand new ones from Rogue. Um, got um, some other older school ones off of Craigslist, people had used. Just have them for every shape and sizes. Honestly, a lot of people who are serious about lifting, they're gonna have their own weight belt anyway, but might as well have some stuff to offer beginners so they can at least you know reinforce their diaphragms when they're doing deadlift or you know when they're doing squats and shit. Safety squat bar, maybe not necessary for weightlifting gym, um, but I think a lot of people appreciate it, especially if you wanna take all the weight off your lower back, put it straight on your legs. Duffalo bar, very popular, very much desired. Um, Kabuki makes the Duffalo bar. They're super expensive and they were actually out of stock when I went to go buy one. But Titan Fitness had their knockoff version called the Yukon. It's probably the exact same thing. Um, nobody's complained about it so far. Everybody likes it. Other types of specialty bars. Um, I think I mentioned deadlift bar already. Deadlift bar is good to have for deadlifting. Very convenient, especially if you're gonna have a lot of weight on there. Um, hybrid bar, honestly, I don't have any Olympic bars, just that dedicated Olympic at least. Some people like to do, you know, the Olympic lifts. So hybrid bar lets you do powerlifting and Olympic lifting, very affordable. I got one from the Boneyard sale of Rogue. Actually, all of my Rogue bars are Boneyard ones. The difference seems to be that it's just, you know, they don't, they don't have the spray on it. They claim that there's cosmetic imperfections. I haven't noticed any. They all seem to be okay to me. So, women's bar. Um, Women's bar is nice to have, uh, Bella bar in particular from Rogue. It's a hybrid bar, powerlifting, uh, Olympic lifts on it. The reality is, you know, this might be a controversial thing to say, and, and some people don't like to hear it, but it's, it's the damn truth, right? Some women have smaller hands than men do. It's easier for women to get into powerlifting and Olympic lifting if they have a bar that has a thinner, slightly, you know, less heavy bar. That's just reality, okay? That's that's not trying to be prejudicial. That's just anatomy, okay? Sexual dimorphism is a thing in the human species. Some women have small hands. It's harder for them to grip onto a power bar than it is a more narrow bar. So, have a women's bar. It's an opportunity. They don't have to only use the women's bar. The women's bar is also useful for teenage boys who are like 12, 13 years old, just getting into weightlifting. No worries. Okay, leg machine specifically. Leg press, have to have it, okay? Have to have leg press. Allows you to get nice, really deep, deep, deep movement and squat. And um, honestly, it's a lot safer than doing it on the heavy, you know, a heavy rack with squats. The, the thing that a lot of people focus on, it seems, is the amount of weight you can lift. Everybody wants to be Ronnie Coleman, okay? Ronnie Coleman's awesome, don't get me wrong. Ronnie Coleman's the king, okay? But if you want to destroy your ass, constantly power lift all the time, do your, your, your max PRs. That will destroy your joints when you're just starting out weightlifting. It's reality. So I like to just warm up with squats, warm up with squats, okay? And then I'll actually put more heavy weight on for a leg press, get a deeper thing. I do that for a couple of reasons. I actually have knee problems from my army days, okay? So I don't want to overwhelm my body on, on the squats. Um, type of leg press you should get. First and foremost, there is a model of leg press combination hack squat thing. I don't know who the fuck makes it. Avoid it like the plague. It is a piece of shit. Do not buy that thing. Um, don't use it. It's not good. Um, get a dedicated leg press station. Ideally one that is kind of like the old school Nebula styles. Nebula, it's a company not around anymore. Um, they make the absolute best leg press um, that's available on the market, uh, used market, but nevertheless. They are hard to find and they are kind of expensive because they are highly sought after. You will probably pay somewhere around $3,000 for a old school Nebula leg press. There's one being sold right now on the market and it's, um, I, I, I held off on buying it because I just couldn't uh, justify it paying $3,000 for a leg press when I had a very short budget for this. So instead I bought a smaller model 
that was actually made by a friend of mine. Um, he had a gym here in Oregon, and um, his name's Rob. He owns a roll bar company, roll bars for race cars. He made some equipment for the gym that he used to own. And some of that equipment's been floating around here in Oregon. And I actually ended up with two pieces out of his old, old gym, the leg press and the bent over row station. So I like it because you can go all the way down with the leg press and go all the way back up, which is what you really want in a leg press. That's what people like with the nebula style leg presses. Has a very large platform, so you can get a very kind of almost sumo sort of squat to it, depending on how big you are. I suppose if you're much bigger than me, you can't really sumo with it, but I can't, so. Anyway, that's kind of what you want in a leg press. You want something that can get a very deep leg press in your, your movement. Leg extension machines, leg curl machines. Leg extension machine, I have a Nautilus leg uh, extension machine. I like it, it has the cam, increases the resistance when you get into that very forward motion, uh, which is where you want the resistance at for your quads. Um, I also have a hammer strength isolateral leg extension that a lot of people like because you can't cheat with your strong side as easily. Now, of course, you can do leg extensions on the more traditional style of leg extension, which just has the bar in front of it, okay? Just use it one le one legged, okay? It's not that hard. Um, but for some people's hips, it can be kind of awkward to do that because the, the resistance point is on the right side, usually on the right side, okay? So it can be kind of awkward you and it with your left leg. Understandable, I have the alternative, okay? The very nice hammer strength isolateral leg extension, which allows you to put weight plates onto either side and you can't cheat with your strong side no more. Nice. Leg curl machine. There is only one leg curl you should get, okay? And it's not the lion one. I know, I know. Lots of people like the lion curl because they like to look at girls' asses in the gym. But the reality is that the lion leg curl is really more of a glute exercise than it is a hamstring exercise. And the point of a leg curl is the hamstrings, not the glutes. In order to get into the right angle for a leg curl on a lion leg curl, you have to kind of shove your ass up into the air and it's just not convenient. It messes with how much weight you can actually put onto it. It's not useful. Uh, excuse me, it, it means useful if you have nothing else, but it's not desirable, okay? The desirable thing is a seated leg curl, which is what I have. I have the Nautilus version, which is one of the better versions, okay? Have that. You wanna work your glutes? Have something for the glutes, okay? Have a butt blaster, have a glute kickback. I have a hoist glute kickback in here. That's what you should use for working your butt, okay? You can kind of do uh, kickbacks on a cross, cable crossover machine with the ankle attachments. And I do have ankle attachments for that reason, but the kickback machines make it much simpler. Calf machines. You want two calf machines. You want standing calf machine, you want seated calf machine because you want to work both parts of the calf and standing works one part of the calf more than the other. Seated works one part of the calf more than the other. There you go. Uh, torsi dorsi also, you can kind of do torsi dorsi on a seated calf. A little bit harder to do it on the standing calf, so it's more convenient. Um, there is, of course, the torsi dorsi actual station, so you can get one of those. I don't have one of those right now, um, but you can kind of do it on a seated calf machine. Anyway, so whatever. Lower back machine. I have a lower back plate loaded machine, lower, lower back extension machine, really is what it's called. Um, it's kind of it does work the lower back, uh, but the um, uh, it's also kind of a glute machine. It's kind of a glute and hamstring machine as well. Um, there's a really, really, really highly desired, but I've never used machine made uh, by Arthur Jones, who's the creator of the old school Nautilus equipment from a company called Medex. It is uh, something something lumbar extension back machine. I can't remember what the hell it's called. A lot of people like it. They consider it to be the best back machine. I don't have one, super rare. Um, nevertheless, uh, I find the lower back extension machine that I have the plate loaded one. It is a Nautilus brand, but I think it was made in like the 90s or something. In any case, it works and at least have something for the lower back, okay? Cybex, I think makes a really good lower back machine. And um, if you can find one, there you go. 
What else do you need for a bodybuilding gym? You know, I honestly can't think of it. I think I kind of got everything. I got everything really covered for the most part. There's some very specialty stuff you can get. Pendulum squat, as an example. Hack squat is another, you know, version. Uh, pendulum squat is kind of a, a more advanced version, I suppose, of the design of a hack squat. Everybody likes hack squat because of Tom Platt's, okay? He did, you know, his, his training videos are fun to watch and, in, in, you know, to model. But pendulum squat lets you get a lot deeper and it's the same exact movement. That's all I can think of, to be honest. Um, there's lots of other great stuff you can get for bodybuilding, lots of esoteric stuff, but those are the big bases to cover, I think, if you're gonna have a serious old school style of gym that people can do some serious, serious training on and get amazing physiques and see good results. They need to be able to do a variety of exercises for, for, for whatever muscle groups they're targeting, and it's good to have combination of free weights and machines so that once you've exhausted your stabilizers or the other supporting muscles, you can further isolate those muscle groups using the machines that don't so much work the stabilizers and can be focused just on like the bicep or the glute or whatever it is you're trying to work. Kind of a long video here, but uh, I think this kind of covers it for what kind of equipment to get. I could talk another video maybe about like how to find a location and the software to get for billing and all of that stuff. But let's just see what people think about this little video here where I talk about like what actual equipment to put into a bodybuilding gym and have people come in and be able to actually do bodybuilding exercises uh, without much difficulty in trying to find some programming for them to do. Hope you guys found this video useful. See you in the next one.